guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah. And I'm Selena. And we're incoming business university students. So next year, I will be attending Queen's University at the Smith School of Business for the Bachelor of Commerce program. And I'll be attending Western in BMOS with Ivy AEO status. To learn more about us, feel free to check out our channel. And if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. So in today's video, we'll be sharing the activities and experiences that we did to earn money while in high school. But keep in mind that we could have worked a lot more than we actually did, but we focused a lot more on our extracurriculars um, and jobs that had customer service related in it. And a funny story with this whole job process was that our mom actually really wanted us to get a job because she wanted other people to yell at us as if she doesn't do that enough at home. So the first real job that we had in high school was working as a waiting pool attendant in grade 9 and 10. So waiting pools, if anyone doesn't know, they're just these small little outdoor pools that are mainly for like toddlers and kids like under 10. And it's the water level is about like knee length. And it's mostly like located um, in like outdoor pools. Outdoor, I was going to say outdoor pugs, but pugs. And in grade 9, we worked as relief because we applied late. So for anyone that doesn't know, relief with the City of Toronto as a waiting pool attendant is basically where you, uh, if someone's sick or just can't come in that day, you would go and repla uh, replace them for that day. So it wasn't, we didn't have a permanent schedule. It was just like um, on the call job, basically, because we would just receive emails or calls and then just go and cover for that day. So it was like very inconsistent. And then in grade 10, we were able to actually work full-time or like part-time so in terms of the money we worked for around in grade nine it was 16 hours a week for four weeks at minimum wage making it around 896 dollars a month and because we did this for two months um, in the summer of grade nine we earned close to two thousand dollars but not quite there so in the summer of grade 10 we worked the entire summer and this included some holidays which we were able to earn more money from which i'll talk about in a little bit uh but we were actually able to get our own pool this time instead of just like wandering around to different pools. So that was really nice. And it was actually a really fun experience, even though it was a second year doing waiting pool, because we had some funny and um, nice coworkers and also the park that we were located at. There was some really nice shade, so we, won't, we didn't have to always stand in the sun. So for anyone who's thinking of becoming waiting pool attendant this year, the minimum wage has since gone up from 14. So you will be earning more. So that's a good thing. Now in terms of how much we earned for one month, uh, it was 37 hours a week for four weeks, um, again at minimum wage, so for one month we earned approximately $2,072, and because we worked for two months, we earned close to $5,000, and I earned like about a thousand more than Selena because she took some more days off, and also because some of the days that she skipped were holidays, and for holidays, I don't know if this applies to like other places, but at least with the city of Toronto, for holidays you're paid at a 1.5 time rate so the amount of money that I would earn an hour would be like $14 times 1.5 that would be the amount so it was a lot more so even though it's very comfortable and it seems like you're not actually doing that much you still want to take this job seriously because it does reflect well to your supervisors so for us the first year I think because we did a pretty decent job and because we were also 14 one of our supervisors kind of I guess remembered us because she mentioned it to another supervisor so the year later when we were applying again to be a waiting pool she already knew us so we started off with giving a really strong impression so another way that we earn money is through commissions and freelance work so this is specifically with our writing and our artwork so one of my largest commissions was this february and cbc kids news commissioned me to write an article of 500 words max for chinese new year so Due to a signed contract, I can't disclose the exact information, but it was around $350. So what we did in the summer of grade 11 was we worked as lifeguards because a couple months prior, we got our NLS certification, which is this training that you have to complete if you want to be a lifeguard. So the pay was $17 an hour, and we did 12 hours a week. So in one month, we earned around $818. And at the time, because there was also COVID, so of course anything that I'm going to describe with lifeguarding will be different than what the typical day in a life of a lifeguard is. But with COVID and in the summer, we did a data management course as well as we also started a nonprofit last year at the same time. So we didn't book all the shifts that we could. We just did two uh, two days in a week and life gardening was actually a pretty fun experience and what was different was that rather than gardening like a lot of people at the same time because of covid there was only lane swim so it this differs between different community centers but for our community center 
we only had three lanes, so we, we only need to go to three people at a time, whereas one lifeguard is allowed to go up to 25 people. So the last like other so sub-source of income that we had during high school was tutoring. So this was on and off, so I don't remember the exact like price like or money amount that we earned from this. But again, like I mentioned, with teaching and just teaching tuition, if you teach a subject, especially school subjects, in a competitive area where parents really value this, the kids' education and school is very important, you can probably earn more. If you want to teach something, make sure you're serious about it, you are committed, and you have a good system going just so, you know, you're responsible for the students and, you know, the money that they are paying you, but you can also, I guess, sleep good at night knowing that you're actually teaching them valuable things. So the main source of revenue and, of course, the one that was the most consistent was piano instructing. So we did this first with the city of Toronto at a local community center, and then we started to teach privately. So at this community center, it, each session was nine weeks long, and each week it was four hours with eight students, and each student had a 30-minute slot. So in terms of the money, because it was nine weeks for four hours a week, and the pay was around $23 per hour. We For one session, we earned about $828. And I had doubled this amount because after the first session, I decided to do one more, whereas Selena started to teach privately. Teaching at the community center was both stressful and an enjoyable experience, which you'll hear Selena talk about in a little bit. So teaching piano privately is a year-long job experience. And again, it's one of our primary ways to earn money. So in total, we both have six students and for four weeks a month multiply by twenty dollars for 30 minutes um, at one lesson a week that's around four hundred eighty dollars a month but this does differ a lot because some of our students have more than 30 minutes they have, some of them have less but also with COVID-19 this was the job that was most impacted I would say because a lot of our students weren't comfortable with online lear learning so they actually decided to take a break while others continue to do virtual lessons. So teaching piano was our most consistent a yearly source of income and it was really nice because we could teach from the comfort of our house but also at a nearby community center that was only five minutes away so every month we were able to earn around five hundred dollars with only basically doing 12 hours of work. So we got started with teaching piano really because once we passed a grade 8 exam the summer before um, a teacher mentioned that once you have your grade 8 piano certificate, like playing certificate, you can technically start teaching, but then obviously we were wondering like which parent would actually want to bring their kids to learn with us because we were still students, I think we were in grade 11 at the time, um, like so we weren't that old. Um, so then the easiest way is to go with the city. Because we already worked in the aquatic sector as a lifeguard, it was pretty like we already have a record with them, we already did the police checks before, um, we have some status, like senior status, because we worked in the aquatic sector. So then we applied for some openings online and we actually weren't expecting response. Um, but then we got a response back and then we scheduled an interview. Then with this job is because we didn't have weekend lessons, we could only have them during the weekdays and we taught eight students back to back. So this was four hours of straight teaching. And so basically we had to end school our first lesson started around 4 or 4.15, we, we like raced to the community center, had like a five minute going to the washroom, getting a water, um, and then we just started teaching. So these were the 30 minute time slots and quite literally there were no breaks in between, so it was like 30 minutes back to back, so you had to like really try to get as much done as possible in 30 minutes, but also really try to make sure you don't go over time because once you go over time, there's another student waiting outside. And the main reason why we decided to go from the city of Toronto, which we were paying, like we were getting paid $23 an hour, which is much more than the minimum wage here, which is like 15, I think. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that we found this actual job um, from a friend of ours who, would, who was teaching. So that's how we knew about it. And once again, we decided to switch because even though we were being paid quite a lot over the minimum wage, um, the four hours back to back of just straight talking and teaching, like this basically the same thing to eight students uh, back to back was very tedious. It was tiring because we'd literally come home at like eight o'clock at night because it was from four to eight. Um, really tired because we just talked for so long with like the kids. Um, it was really fun because we got to see a lot of kids, but it wasn't like something that we could do maintain. So after the sessions ended, some kids wanted to continue learning. So we told them a price, which was $20 for 30 minutes. And we actually did the math and calculated how much they paid for their lessons with the community center. So they paid around 
$30 for 30 minutes. So we charge $20 for 30 minutes. If you do it in the hours, that'd be $40 for an hour. So, but because the beginners, a lot of them only really need 30 minutes. So then several of them wanted to continue with us. So that's how we got a first bunch of students. And then the rest of them, we just did like, you know, local marketing, uh, like word of mouth marketing to students in the area. And then with these students, a key tip that we did when we were teaching piano is that we went over time. So even if the lessons were 30 minutes and they were paying for 30 minutes, we went to 45 minutes. Um, and then some of the students who had paid for 45 minute lessons, went to we went to an hour. So the reason for this is that when you go over time, it really shows that not even that like you have to go over time, but when we first started with our piano teacher, like a very first one, she counted it like right like by the second, like when 30 minutes hit, she would tell us like our lesson's over, you know, time for you to go. And that just seemed kind of stingy and cheap. Um, so when we go over time, it really shows that you are like truly committed to your student, which we did like really enjoy teaching. Um, that's also what our piano teacher did with us. And we really enjoyed that method of having that extra time to just finish up what we were learning. So some advice that we'd have for teaching piano, just teaching anything, is that you have to first make sure you have somewhat enough experience that someone's not gonna question you or that you, you like, at least you actually know what you're doing. So you're not gonna be like, like in the middle of a lesson and be like, I don't know what to do. So obviously have enough experience, but also like the nature of teaching piano here in this area, like usually um, piano teachers are paid quite a lot in Toronto. So that's why our prices are what they are. I think they're actually lower than the average um, that, that's charged. So if you want to teach and earn money, this definitely is a career you can consider. It's very lucrative. You can earn a lot of money, um, but make sure that obviously you are doing a really good job and you're passionate about it and you are responsible for these children. So if you want to make money, you have to take risks and not be afraid of challenges. So it may seem intimidating at first because you're a grade nine student and you know, you're super small, but just get out there and start working and the rest will work its way out. Trust me. If you found this video helpful, smash that like button, comment any topics you want us to cover, and subscribe to our channel. Remember that there are a lot of ways to earn money that we didn't mention in our video because we wanted it to be specific to what we did in high school. But until next time, the Gore Twins out. Thank you.